Obrigado all my Portuguese speaking friends out there. Big besos out to you guys in Brazil. Hi. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to teach you something that maybe you've heard before. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit difficult in English. You are lucky, like um, other um, languages, for example, Spanish and French. We have a lot of words in English that are very similar in Portuguese and English. So if you change the accents a little, use your hands a lot, people will probably be able to understand you. But sometimes this is not the case. That's why we have created these things called false friends. Now, false friends are words that you think you can use because they sound almost the same in English, but the meanings completely different. Um, so it can lead to some mistakes, but if you make a mistake, who cares? Really? Come on. You're learning language. Don't worry, but I'm here to teach you how to correct some mistakes that you might make. Um, and thanks to Hinata and William for helping me out with this one. Um, let's go to it. So false friends. They're not your friends, they are your enemies. Okay, so the first one <laughs> we're gonna start, yeah, is uh, cafeteria. In your country, in Brazil, maybe in Portugal, I don't know, a cafeteria is a coffee shop. So it's a place where you can go and get a delicious coffee, uh, maybe get some delicious Brazilian treats, like queijo de pan, pan de queijo. Mm -hmm. Maybe some honeymoons, delicious. Uh, but in English, cafeteria, the exact same spelling. Check it out. Cafeteria, cafeteria. Uh-oh. In English, a cafeteria, it is not a coffee shop. It is actually a lunch room. So if you have a job, oh, do you have a job? Cool. In Canada, um, sometimes there is a lunchroom, but all of the time in the school in Canada, children or students go and eat together. Um, they can eat lunch, they can eat dinner in one room. And we call this a cafeteria. So a cafeteria is a lunchroom or a common room for eating. Many businesses will have a cafeteria. Um, it's definitely not a coffee shop. It's pretty terrible. <sighs> Coffee shops are more fun than a lunchroom, I think. Um, the next one, in your country, you can enjoy a delicious cafe, uh, which means coffee for you and Brazilian coffee. Woo! That stuff gets you going in the morning. Mm -hmm. Cool. But in English, a cafe is not a drink, like a coffee. A cafe is a small restaurant where you can buy coffee or sweets. It's like a Portuguese bakery. So a cafe is a restaurant in English and cafe is not coffee in English. You also have to be careful of your pronunciation of this word. It is not cough. That's a cough. We have to say coffee. We don't have to say coffee. Hi, Vinny. But you have to say coffee. If you just say cough, <coughs> well, that's not a good thing. You, you don't want to go to a uh, cafe and ask for a cough because then you'd be sick. Uh, next one. Uh, you guys use as toothpaste, right? So pasta, pasta, pasta. You guys know as a paste, like a gel, kind of a semi- um, liquid material, but we always use it as a food, a very delicious Italian food called pasta. You guys probably know that already because you eat a lot of pasta maybe, but in English, this is paste. Pasta is the food. You don't want to eat that stuff. Um, the next word, denchi. Yeah. You're brushing your dentures there, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, denti in Portuguese means tooth or teeth. I guess it's one. In English, it doesn't mean teeth. It means a dent. 
to help you out with this word, a dent is an indentation. That's the same in Portuguese. So, an indentation means dent. This is if you're driving your car and somebody hits your car, just a minor accident, then you will have a dent in your car. A dent means an indentation or it's pushed in, in one area. Um, it's not completely broken. It's just pushed in or there's an indentation. So it has nothing to do with your teeth. It does sound like this word and the spelling is very, very similar. So be careful of that false friend. Um, this is a fun one. I, I kind of like this. I like the pronunciation of this word. I have to look in my book. You guys say balcon. Mm -hmm. When you guys walk into a bar, you go up to the balcon and you order a delicious beer. But not in English. A balcon in Portuguese means a counter in a bar. This is fun. We actually call the counter in a bar a bar. So if we walk into a bar or a pub or a nightclub and we go up to the counter, we call that a bar. If you go into a restaurant, somebody might say to you, would you like to sit at the bar or in the restaurant? And you're a little bit confused because sitting at the bar might seem a little uncomfortable because it's Got to balance, but be careful. A balcony in English is very similar to a terrace. So a balcon sounds like balcony, but a balcony in English is something that is like an outside little portion of your house. A terrace is another word we can use for it. That's the same in Portuguese. So be careful. If you're going to the balcon, you're not going to get a drink. You're going to go outside Woo, for some fresh air. <sighs> Welcome. Next one. This is a very common mistake that I hear a lot. And it's kind of funny. Pretender. Oh, let me, let me check my pronunciation, please. Pretendor. Thank you. Pretendor. Pretendor, when you talk about it in Portuguese, it means you intend to do something. You want to do something or you will do something. You're going to try. But in English, it sounds and looks very similar to the word pretend, the verb to pretend. This is almost an opposite kind of meaning. If you pretend to do something, you're not actually doing it. You are using your imagination and you're not at all doing it in real life. So for example, I can pretend I am a horse, <laughs> but I don't intend to be a horse. I can never, oh, I can never be a horse. Oh, I'm cool with that. I'd like to be a unicorn actually. So I would like to pretend to be a unicorn, right? But if you intend to do something, it's completely different. So be careful. You want to do it, not pretend to do it. Um, possibly the most comedic, which means funny for me, when I think about all the Brazilians around the world who come to English-speaking countries, and I think about you guys going in and out of doors. You are, yeah, how many times do you get the door in your face? But don't worry because I do this all the time and I can read English. So if you have a door slammed in your face because you think that pushar means pull, but in English it means push, then you're, you're not, no. Nope. So pushar in Portuguese means pull. So you're, you're pulling this way, but Actually, it means push. So it's a complete opposite. So you would end up smashing your face in the door. The next one that is fun as well is emperor. Emperor means, does not mean pull. What? 
What? I, no, I'm confused. Hold on. Emperor in Portuguese means you push. And it sounds like pull in English, but it's not. So how about we do this? Just try the door a little bit. Don't look at the sticker if it says push or pull. Just kind of try it, you know, like kick it with your leg or something or, you know, <clears throat> get your bum into it and see what happens. Or you could just wait for someone to open it. Um, but don't feel bad because it's very confusing for me too. I'm, I don't know if I'm pushing or pulling anymore. Oh goodness. How are you guys ever going to get in the door? Smashing your head. I have smashed my head on many doors. I see people do this all the time. I will see pull and I'm like, oh, well, I can't open the door. Bollocks. Push. Yeah. Okay. So to recap, push our. This, this, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Just be careful. Next one, um, collar, okay? It means, you guys use it as a verb to glue something, but it's very, very close to the English word collar. The collar is the part of your shirt. So you could have a wide collar, like in the 70s, like, whoa, disco mama. Or you can have a button down collar. The collar is the thing that is always on a shirt. I'm not, I don't have a collar. Oh, I've lost my collar. But it definitely does not mean the verb to glue. Mm, that's completely different and you don't want glue on your shirt because and you couldn't get it off. It's pretty hot. Wouldn't it be very good. This one I know is very confusing um, and I can see why. Mm, but Livaria. Let's check this, this spelling. Livaria. Sounds like diarrhea. I like it. Livaria in Portuguese is a bookstore, a place where you go and buy a book. It sounds very similar to the English word library. But a library, <laughs> free books, woohoo! You don't have to buy the books there, you borrow the books. So that means that you go and you give the librarian a book, you have a library card, ding, and you get the book and you take it home. That's borrow. Okay, and then you go and you give it back. That's what borrow means. You take it and you give it back. So you can't buy the books at a livreria. You can borrow them. Um, the last one, fabrica. It's a factory, right? It's a place where they make things. Mm -mm, not in English. Fabrica is very close to the English word fabric, which means material. So the fabric, for example, of my sweater, what's it made of? Unicorn hair, of course. Unicorn hair sweater, amazing. Um, the fabric means the material or what things are made out of. Predominantly clothes, what clothes are made out of. Is it cotton, is it silk? It's probably made in a factory but it isn't a place, it's a thing. I hope that I've confused you further with the push and the pull thing, because I don't know, but I want you to understand that learning English is always difficult. You're gonna make mistakes, it's okay. Enjoy, have fun, I know you will. Till next time, bye.